Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be giving a quick introduction to GraphQL and following on from this video, I'm going to be making a tutorial series on how to use GraphQL. So first of all, what is it? It was developed internally by Facebook in 2012, but it's been publicly released in 2015, so it's open source now. It's a query language for your API, so it would serve as a replacement for REST or SOAP APIs. And the difference between GraphQL APIs and these traditional APIs are that it's organized into types, not endpoints. And this is one of the advantages, as we're going to see in a minute. So why is it called GraphQL? And this is one of the first things that I wondered, but now it makes complete sense. So you can represent the data in your application with a graph made up of nodes and edges. And the nodes represent objects, the edges represent the relationship between these objects. So you can see this in their logo in the top right corner. It's made up of nodes and edges, and these represent the data and the relationship between the data in your application. So that's really cool, and it makes sense. So now, what are the advantages of GraphQL? Why would you use it? First of all, it gives clients the power to ask for exactly what they want, nothing more, nothing less. This makes requests and responding to requests really quick as there's no redundant data. So here in this example, the client is asking for the first name of all the users. And as you can see in the response, that's all we're getting, just the first name of all the users, no redundant data. In this request, the client's asking for the first name and the last name of all the users. And that's exactly what it's getting back. Again, nothing more, nothing less. So this is really cool and makes the use of APIs much more efficient. Another advantage of GraphQL is that multiple resources can be requested with one single request. So with REST, if you needed two separate resources, you would need to make two different requests to two different endpoints. So in this example, our API can be used to retrieve users and books. So with a REST API, you'd have to make one GET request to users and another GET request to books. But what this looks like in GraphQL is one single request where we're asking for the first name of users and the title of the books. And as you can see in the response, that's all we're getting back with this single request. This has obvious advantages, both for the client and for the server. So after all this, looking at the advantages, is GraphQL the future of APIs? Well, I guess we don't know that yet, but we do know that many big, large scale companies have started using GraphQL themselves. So obviously Facebook, they created it, so they're gonna start using it. And they are currently using it in some areas. Spotify, GitHub, Pinterest, along with other large companies are also using GraphQL. Only time will tell if it catches on and becomes the API standard. If you're interested in learning GraphQL, then stick around. I'm going to be making a tutorial series on GraphQL, and this is what my next few videos will be about. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.